Thank you for a lovely evening, Mr. Steptoe. That's all right, Mrs. Mrs. Marshall. Yes, Mr. Steptoe. I was wondering if we could stop calling each other Mr. and Mrs. My name's Albert. Oh, oh well, all right then. Albert. <laughs> What's your handle? Pardon? Your handle, your name. <laughs> It's Emma. 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 That's a nice name. Well, actually, I knew it was Emma, but I didn't like to call it to you straight out in case you objected, lot. Oh, oh, no. Well, as a matter of fact, I suppose we ought to be getting used to the idea. Have you told your son yet? Have you spoken to him? Uh, no, I have not yet. I will, though. I'll have a word with him. He'll be all right. Oh, are you sure? Yeah, he'll knocked out, he'll be. Well, I hope so. Don't you worry about him. I can handle him. He'll be all for it. It was a lovely film. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. It didn't hurt your eyes, did it, being so close to the screen? <laughs> Enjoyed it. Good. Well, I suppose you better be saying good night. Thanks for seeing me home. <laughs> I've got to look after you now, haven't I? <laughs> uh, I suppose you better be saying good night. Well, good night, Albert. Good night, Emma. See you again tomorrow. Oh, yes, that'll be nice. <laughs> 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 well, I suppose you better be saying good night. Good night, Albert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, just a minute. You better have these, the peppermint creams. You can finish them up on the way out. No, no, you have them. I know how you like them. Well, see you tomorrow. Hey, in the afternoon when me son's out. Yes, well, good night. <coughs> Don't forget to tell him. No, no, I won't. Good night. <laughs> What a bleeding hell have you been? <laughs> Hello, Shana. I didn't know you was in. What do you mean you didn't know I was in? I've been in for hours. Do you know what time it is? It is half past eight. <laughs> Mate, is that? Is it? Yeah, it is. Where have you been? I've been stuck here waiting for my dinner. What are you all punched up for? <laughs> I've been out. I oh, know you've been out. Where have you been? Oh, come on. Usual time. No you. No dinner. I thought something had happened to you. I've been looking all over the place. I've been out in the yard turning all the junk over in case it had fallen on you. I was just getting ready to go down the nick to see if you was in there or the hospital or something. I was going to have the canal drag. <laughs> Why didn't you leave a note saying? I mean, I didn't know where you... Where the hell have you been? I've been to the pictures. To where? The pictures. The pictures? Yeah. The pictures? The pictures? Oh, that is good. That is very good. No dinner. I mean, old man at the pictures. I've been up since seven o'clock this morning, sweating my guts out on that cart, humping great mangles about, jumping on and off the cart, pulling that horse round corners without a break, I've come home starving, and you, nothing to do all day, you go to the pictures. I don't ask you to contribute much towards this business. Just get my dinner of an evening, that is all. That is not too much to ask, is it? Oh, oh you want some dinner then? Yes, that is the general idea. I, I want some dinner. That's what I've got all under my nose for, to shove food down. 
been in three hours. You could have got yourself something quite easily, couldn't you? No, oh, where are you going? Get some fish and chips. It's Monday, isn't it? But don't open on Monday, do they? The pictures is open, but the fish shops is shut. <laughs> oh, help me a tin of beans, then. Oh, don't bother. I'll go down the ice tweet. I'll go and get a bowl of rice at the lotus room. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I bother. The horse has eaten. The goldfish has eaten. No doubt you have eaten. But me, Harry Burke here, who does all the hard work, I'm going to sit here for three hours with my guts twitching. <laughs> Anybody think I'm in a habit of going out? You don't make a habit of doing anything, do you? You are becoming an idle little old man, aren't you? I've got some peppermint creams here. No, I don't want your peppermint creams. <laughs> what do you think I am, the leader? My one my dinner. Don't you understand? D-I-N-R. What is the matter with you? Don't you care anymore? I mean, have you gone completely bonkers? I mean, don't you think anymore? What's that supposed to mean? Look, if it was me what stayed home and you went out doing all the hard work, if it was me that was the delicate one, I I'd use my head. I'd, I'd uh, say to myself, Harold, you're onto a good thing here. You might not like him, but you've got to look after him, haven't you? Keep him going, keep him fed, make him comfortable, look after him. Otherwise, he might get stroppy and jag it all in. That's what I'd be thinking. <laughs> I'd use my noddle. I'd play my cards right. That's what I'd do. Otherwise, I might wake up one morning and find myself all alone with my bread and butter gone. <laughs> yeah. You don't only really want you. Me, you want yourself as well. Yeah, well, I'd do a hell of a sight better if you weren't about, mate, with worrying me. I would have struck out on my own years ago if it hadn't been for you and being lumbered with you. Yeah. I suppose you're right. Well, I'm right. I realise I've been holding you back all these years. Ah, oh, well. Can't have been easy for a young lad to look after an old man all his life. I suppose I've expected too much of you. I suppose I, I've taken advantage over the years. Keeping you cooped up here when you could have been out enjoying yourself. Getting a nice girl and that. Yeah, oh, well, well, I don't suppose it's been too easy for you all these years. I mean, I wouldn't be much of a son if I'd have slung my hook and left you on your own, I suppose. I mean, it's just one of those things. It's unfortunate. It can't be helped. I mean, it's, well, I get a bit teased off at times. When you don't pull your weight, and that is all I'm complaining about. I mean, you know... No, no, you're quite right. You shouldn't have to spend your young years playing nursemaid to me. You're just as entitled as anyone else to go out and make your own way in the world. Yeah, well, I suppose I am, but uh, it can't be done, can it? I mean, it just ain't in the cards. It's unfortunate. There's no point in talking about it. Well, that's just it. Things is going to change. What do you mean? Well, I might as well tell you now. Harold... You know where I went tonight? Yeah, the pictures. Yeah, I went with someone. Yeah, oh, I, I was said you ought to go out with friends of your own age. You're not listening to me. Yes, I am. You went to the pictures with a friend. You had a marvellous time. You forgot about my dinner. We've had a row. Let's forget about it. It's all over. No, it's not all over. That's just the point. Harold, I'm thinking of getting married again. <laughs> Getting married again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I knew you'd be pleased. She's a very nice woman. You like her? You're joking, of course. I am. I'm getting married. It's all arranged. I asked her tonight and she said, yes, we're getting married. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Dad. <laughs> I mean, it's out of question. Are you all right? Getting married? Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I'm getting married. I know it must be a bit of a surprise to you, but we've known each other a long Don't time. Don't be tough, Dad. You're almost 65. What do you want to get married for? I mean, people will laugh at you. They'll start talking. I don't know what they do. I'm getting married and that's all this to it. I see. How long has this been going on? You'll be free, Harold. You'll be able to strike out on your own. It's what you've always wanted. I said, how long has this been going on? Well, how do you know what I want? I don't want it. I don't want it at all. 
How long has this been going on and why haven't I been told? I just told you. Yeah, no. That's good, isn't it? Hey, I'll come home, no dinner, and you come in and tell me you're going to get married. I thought you'd be pleased. Well, I'm not pleased. Who is this old bag, anyway? Don't you find out? That's <laughs> enough for an old bag if she's got to marry you. Don't you speak to me like that. What do you expect me to do? Give her a chance. You haven't even met her yet. I don't want to. Oh, blimey, she ain't even in her family and she's done me out of a dinner. What's going to be like what you guys got in? Now, look, son. Don't son me. You have been knocking about with some strange bird behind my back all this time without telling me. There's been nothing to tell. Didn't get serious until last week. We didn't realise we was in love. Oh, oh. In love? Do you mind? You're almost 65. You're talking like a 16-year-old schoolboy. Well, there's no special age for falling in love, is there? Well, I find it repulsive. I'm sorry, but it's disgusting. <laughs> How old is the bird? She ain't a bird. <laughs> she's 55 and she's a widow like me. 55? Ugh. Oh. <laughs> 55? Now, think about it, Dad. This is her last chance. She wants someone to look after her in her old days, and along comes some old nit like you, and she's got yours <laughs> instead of away. She's in love with me. Oh, Dad, it's not like that at your age. She's got her eye on her main chance. A bloke like you, a little bit of a business, a bit of money, a pension on his last leg, she's going to cop the lot. No, Dad, it's very attractive for an old bird. Wake up, Dad, for God's sake, wake oh, up. what money have I got? She's got money of her own little sweet shop up in the ice tree. To back her newspaper, she's very nicely set up. Ah, birds with money, that's even worse. She'll dominate you, Dad. You'll lead a dog's life. I've seen it so often. She'll use her money. You'll go right under her thumb. It'll be do this, do that, and, and, and take the dog for a walk. A dog go down the boozer. I've seen it so often. It's no use trying to talk me out of it, Harold. I'm going to marry her. You've made up your mind? Yeah, yeah, I have. I see. It's all fixed up, then? Yeah, more or less. When is it? <laughs> Couple of weeks. That's a bit quick, isn't it? <laughs> when you get to our age, you can't afford to hang about, can you? No, I wouldn't know, I'm sure. <laughs> we'll be retiring. And I can move down to Cornwall, get a little cottage. Finish me days there. Just the two of us. That'll be very nice for you. Of course, it won't be at once. A couple of months. You'll have plenty of time to look round. Look round for what? Somewhere else to live. Oh, I see. I'm being kicked out now. <laughs> I've served my purpose all these years, and now you don't need me anymore. You won't get rid of me. I don't want to get rid of you, but... Well, you won't want to go on living here with us, will you? You'll be able to take that little bachelor flat you've always been on about. So you're not thinking of bringing her back here? Well, yes, and we both sell up and move down to Cornwall. You are not bringing her back here? Why not? Are you? And another woman? Upstairs in my mum's bedroom? I'm not standing for that. What are you talking about? Look, I may not be able to stop you getting married, but I'll stop you bringing another bird into this house. Well, I'd sooner burn it down. This is my mum's house. Have you got no respect at all? Your mum's been gone 30 years. Anybody think I'd only just put her away? <laughs> you may have forgotten her, but I haven't. She was my mum, remember? <coughs> How do you expect me to feel? You, my dad, with another woman upstairs in my mum's bed. She'd she be my wife. It'll be all church and holy. There'll be nothing funny about our arrangements. <laughs> For 30 years, I've never done nothing against your mother's memory. I never looked at another woman. And I was a young man, in me prime, I had me chances, but now, now I was faithful to her. I haven't forgotten her. I paid £2.12 or 6 a year to keep her grave up. Who paid for the headstone? It wasn't you, it was me, wasn't it? She'd have been unmarked if it had been left up to you. And it's me what puts the dahlias in her vase on her birthday. You, you'd never sat a foot round there. Well, it's in January. I don't go out in January. I never go anywhere in January. It creases me, January does. She wouldn't expect it. 
Wouldn't it be happier for her if she was to know that it was you up above there with the old clippers keeping her grass down instead of somebody else being paid to do it? <laughs> you know what happens? As soon as she's gone, you're bringing strange birds back here. I don't go on 30 years as soon as she's gone. 30 years? It could have been yesterday. You see, Dad? I remember her. I loved your mother. You said you loved this one. What shall I do? I love both of them. You can't have it both ways. <laughs> oh, it may be very convenient for you while you're down here alive, chopping and changing your affections. But what happens when you and this new one go? What happens when you get up there? Which one are you going to go with? You can't go with both of them. They don't allow that sort of thing up there, mate. They're very particular. Well, the vicar said it'd be all right. Yeah, thousands of people get married twice, three times. Not to my mum, though, don't yeah, you? are just being awkward, aren't you? You're jealous, that's it, isn't it? <laughs> just because no birds want you, it's right up your nose, I'm doing all right. That's got nothing to do with it! <laughs> oh, you carry on, mate. You do what you want, as far as I'm concerned. But, just remember, when you're sat in here of an evening with your new lady love, holding hands and giggling, <laughs> My mum will be up there somewhere watching you. So will Emma's old man. They'll be company for Mother, won't they? <laughs> I don't know what you're going on about. Your mother and me had an arrangement. Whichever is went first, the other was free to get married again. My mum would never go married again. My mum would never have brought another man back into this house. My mum was a lovely woman. You take that back, you dirty, filthy-minded old lecher. <laughs> you birds in 45 years, that ain't lecher. <laughs> you ain't fit to mention her name. Oh, God, she married beneath herself when she tied herself up with you. You dragged her down. She was a good woman. You put me down and have a police on you. My mum's too. Apologise. No, I won't. <laughs> Go on, get down on your knees and ask for forgiveness. Apologise. Look at her. Go on, apologise to her. Apologise to my mum. Apologise. That ain't your mother. It's your sister. Sure. Right. Oh, <laughs> apologise. Go on. Apologise to her face. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ask for forgiveness. You hurt me off. Ask for forgiveness. Forgive me for For being, for being a dirty old man. I'm not. Ah, all right, dirty old man. That's a great in your memory. Oh, I'll get you the end for the end of memory. And for not keeping a grass cut round your grave. And for keeping you in this desk drawer all these years. And for trying to poison your son's mind against you by bearing false witness. All these things I do freely admit and repent. I do, I do! And in future, I will honour your memory as becoming to a Sunday school teacher. I will, I will! And I also swear I shall tear away from me this old bag and I shall not take on to myself another woman as never. long as I shall live. Never, never! All right, all right! <laughs> And I shall look after your son, Harold, and I'll have his dinner ready for him in an evening when he comes out. All right. You're right. Uh, uh, uh. Now then. Put that down. Someone will get a... Uh, it's on the other foot now, isn't it? I'll take it all back. I'm going to marry her. I'm not going to give her up. You keep away from here with your red hoof. Go to bed. <laughs> I said all I've got to say. It is up to you now. It is a matter between you and your conscience. Good night. <laughs> and take your tea fight. You nearly choked last night. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, couldn't it have been just you and me? What did you need him to come along and spoil it for? <laughs> Thank you.
Okay. <laughs> oh, it smells good. It's your favourite. Steak and kidney pudding. Oh, yes. This is it. This is more like a homecoming. You see, all that unpleasantness could have been avoided. <laughs> oh, it's very good. <laughs> you surpassed yourself. I didn't know you could cook like this. Thanks. <laughs> See, you can do it when you try. Do you like it? Mmm, very good. Very tasty. Did you have a good day today, son? Fair, very fair. I picked up a nice Victorian brass bedstead. Oh, they're good. They're very much in demand. Get a good price for that. You did very well there. Oh, I've got a whole of half a roll of line up. Be very nice in your bedroom. There's a few holes in it, but it'll cut up nice. This is very good. Where's yours? Aren't you having any? Uh, uh, mine will be along in a minute. <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> this is Mrs. Marston. Emma. So that's it. You cook this, didn't you? Yes. I don't want it. Oh, don't be like that, Harold. Well, I don't want it. It's lousy. You call that a steak and kidney pudding? <laughs> it the way you like it. No, you didn't. Well, how do you like it cooked, then? No, my mum used to cook it. She could cook a steak and kidney pudding. Yeah, she could. you lie. She couldn't cook an egg. You stay out of it. Don't you start <laughs> My mum was a lovely woman. You put her away again. May I see her? <coughs> oh, dear. How long has she been there? She has been asleep for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> she was very beautiful. She was. Far too good for him. She was the best look around here. I remember when she used to take me shopping down the high street. How proud I was. All the men used to turn around and look at her. They did more than look at her. You keep your dirty mouth shut. <laughs> you are my lot of sewer. You are obscene, you are obscene. Now, 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 Harold, that is no way to talk to your father. Well, you don't know him like I do. He's evil. He's a nasty, evil little man. Harold, with or without your approval, I intend to marry your father. Quite right. And I will not stand by and hear you talk to him like that. After all, he is your father. Well, that's never been proved, neither. You've got to be proved. Albert, will you be quiet? Now, you leave this to me. This is my house. Albert. I have a right to me say. Now, you just spoil everything. Now, be quiet. He's doing this deliberately. He's trying to blacken my character in front of you. Oh, nonsense. He's just very fond of his mother. It's natural, and I think it's very nice. His mother? He doesn't remember his mother. He mixed her up with his auntie yesterday. No, I didn't. Will you stop provoking the boy? Leave oh. him alone. Oh, I see. You're on his side. No, I'm not on his yes, side. Yes, you are. You're on his side. You're taking his side against me. You're ganging up on me. Nobody cares what I say. Nobody takes any notice. I might as well be dead. <laughs> Never I hope me mouth should say anything. I'm accused of being vicious. Well, you do say some very nasty things to the boy. I must say it's a side of your character I ain't seen before. And I can't say I'm very impressed. Oh, I see. Criticism now, is it? That's nice. That's very nice. Let me tell you, missus, I never stood any bucks me first while I am standing eight for you. Don't you raise your voice to me? I'll raise me voices. I don't like me out now. Oh, you're just an ill-mannered lout, aren't yes, you? Yes, I am, and I'm proud of it. <laughs> I can understand, you know, what Harold's mother went through now, I can. Oh, yes, well, I'm not going through it. You're not going to put me into an early grave. Ah, oh, well, your old man didn't last long, did he? You saw him off, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I can see no point in continuing this conversation. Where are you going? Nothing to be gained by my staying here. No, 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 wait a minute, Emma. Don't go. Oh, I'm sorry I upset you. I didn't mean to. I just got carried away. It's just that I got fed up being told off all the time. What about all our plans? Our little cottage in Cornwall, my chickens, your, your flower garden. You can't let a little quarrel change everything. You said some very hurtful things, Albert. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. You'll stay, won't you? Well, are you sure you're sorry? All right then, Albert. 
Let's try and forget all about it. <laughs> I, I didn't mean all them things I said about you. Truthfully. Of course I didn't. Not even that bit about mutton done up as lamb. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? He did. This morning when we was talking about it. What do you want to bring that up for? Well, if you're forgiving each other, you might as well know what you're forgiving each other for. <laughs> I mean, you don't want to start married love keeping secrets from each other, do you? Did you say that about me? No. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, but, well, if I did, I didn't mean it like that. Yes, what did you mean? Well, uh, I meant... What, uh, oh, God, cool, blimey. <laughs> If I did say it was a mutton dressed as lamb, what does it matter? It's not important at our age. Well, I wouldn't like you to be disappointed. I'd like you to get your money's worth. Oh, what's the matter with you? You're getting very sensitive in your old age, aren't you? Old age? There you go again. Oh, if I can't <laughs> stand it without you picking holes in it, I might as well better keep my mouth shut. Yes, I think you should. Oh, I see. That's how it's going to be. Is it the bossy type? Oh, I'm not having none of that, thank you. I know you put up with it before and I ain't putting up with it now. Oh, thank you to giving me a ring back. Oh, you can have it back. What about the deposit on the cottage? I paid that. Oh, yes. <laughs> I pity you, Harold, living in the same house with him. You have my sympathy. Now, go on, clear off. Get back to your sweet shop. Oh, I must have been out of my mind wanting to marry a common rag and bone man. A common rag and bone man? I forgot that. I wouldn't bother. Oh, you was well out of that, wasn't you? You was nearly stuck with that for long. Yeah, I saw her the minute I smacked her. She must have thought she was dealing with a mug. Yeah, they're all the same. But you had her number, didn't you? I watched you. You were dead shrewd, weren't you? You stuck up for yourself there, all right. Well, you got her, ain't you? I mean, you can't let them tread all over you. Of course not. Here. Oh. I don't remember saying she was mutton dressed as lamb. <laughs> don't you? No. I thought you did. Don't remember. I could have sworn you did. I must have misheard you. <laughs> did she make any pudding before she left? <laughs> Strawberry flan. I'll go and get it. <laughs> I'm sure I didn't say she was mutton dressed as lamb. Still, she was. I bet I'll take a bars in the state tomorrow. Oh, oh, good idea. There's a lot of good stuff around there. Yeah. Hercules has been going like a bum lately. Has he? Ah, no, Bobber. Must be those new outs we're feeding him. Yeah. What? I know where I can get a sponge rubber mattress for free, Nicker. Be very nice on your bed. Really? I'll get it for you first thing in the morning. It'll be a present. I mean, you might as well be comfortable if you're going to stay here, yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, uh, do you notice her legs? Oof. My mother marshals. Uh, ugly great things. <laughs> oh, blimey. Get one of those across so you wouldn't get up in a hurry. 